Everybody, this is the 2023 Canadian Grand Prix qualifying analysis. There was a couple things yesterday that I thought was pretty interesting, and I think we should dig into it. And instead of just using the vibes and uh, the narratives that we found on the internet or the TV broadcast, why don't we look at some of the numbers and see what if it agrees or not. So my name is Blake. I used to work at Red Bull Racing and Force India as a performance engineer at the track. Uh, and then I was a simulator performance engineer at Red Bull for five years, focusing on car development. So now I'm doing this kind of analysis that I'd be doing at my job, looking at the telemetry data we have available for everybody else and kind of trying to break down and first of all, make data easy to understand. So even if you're not a genius, I think I think we can make some progress and explain the data of what's happening in Formula One and make it a little bit more uh, interesting because this season with Verstappen running away with it and Red Bull running away with it, there's some interesting narratives and we had a mixed wet dry qualifying session, which gave a lot of drama, a lot of chaos. And these are my absolute favorite sessions. So I'm going to get into the graphs and charts in a minute. But here's here's the talking points from this. And this is what we're going to dig into. Uh, Gasly was eliminated in Q1. He was one of Sainz's many impeding victims. Uh, Albon, Alex Albon in the Williams. We saw the underside of that car. It looks very basic. However, Alex Albon, a Q2 merchant, he set the fastest lap of the entire qualifying session in Q2 because he risked it to go out early on a set of dry weather soft tires and he got the tires warmed up and he got the lap in at the perfect amount of track. No one went faster than that lap. So Leclerc was eliminated in Q2. He went out and he said, I want to go to the dries and he was on intermediates, but the team told him that he should set a lap. What was the right decision? And we're going to talk about that. And I've got I don't know, I think I've made Twitter mad, but I think I've got a good opinion and I think kind of know what I'm talking about, but we can talk about it. Uh, Perez seemed to struggle a lot in the wet and he struggled in qualifying as well. What happened? We're going to look at his laps and see what's going on. And then in Q3, it was a, the track conditions were getting a lot worse. The track was degrading um, and Hulkenberg sets a mega lap. He goes P2 in Q3, but we do have some grid penalties. Unfortunately, we'll come back to that. So let's look quickly at the session and just kind of try to understand what tires people were using and why. So here's Q1. Here's the first run. You know, everybody went out and there was a red flag. I've got issues with these two, but basically everybody was out on enters. A new set stopped. Uh, a lot of people went back out on used enters to finish off Q1. And then here's the little tricky thing. Look at the start of Q2. Alex Albon goes out on the soft tire where everybody else goes. Uh, Norris converts early and a couple of other people come in, do a pit stop for something. But most people that make it into Q3 do enter soft with the exception of Alex Albon. So here's here's kind of my rules for wet weather qualifying. You need to be on the right tire at the right time. One, you need to make sure that you put a lap on the board. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be good enough. And there's also some fueling considerations for qualifying as well. So when it's a mixed wet dry qualifying session, you need to put enough fuel typically in the car for the entire session. But that gives you the flexibility so that if it's let's say it starts on enters and the track dries, you can box without going into the garage and have a quick turnaround to put on some dry weather tires. Um, now, if the track dries out, you put on slicks, the full throttle times goes up and your fuel consumption goes up. So when you're figuring out how much fuel to put in the car, you need to leave a little bit of margin. Um, you need to figure out what you expect the lap time to be to figure out how many laps you're going to do in the session. And then you need to figure out how much fuel each lap is going to consume. So it doesn't hurt in these sessions to leave a little bit of qualifying to deal with uncertainty. For example, a lap of fuel is worth half a tenth of lap time. Remember last year in Singapore when Max got caught out, they basically guessed the wrong number of laps and then inherently didn't expect the track to ramp up as quickly and they were under fueled and he had to abort what would have been the mega lap. So we've already talked about Albon's risky, risky tire strat. And this is this is that thing we're talking about. Q2, he goes out super super duper early on that qualifying run um, with the soft tires. Now let's look at this. Here's the lap times that Albon did. So he does, does an outlap. He immediately goes to a 23. He does a 19.4, which was insane fast. And then he does an 18.725, which was the fastest lap time that anybody was going to set in the entire qualifying session. Now, if we look at what Verstappen has done, uh, Verstappen's gone intermediate. Now look at this at the same time, of day he started this around 48 minutes he started this around 48 minutes he's done a 123 the this is what we call the crossover conditions where the soft and the intermediate tire are doing roughly the same lap times now max is like the track is drying too much we need to get onto the softs the team have seen this right uh max does a 30 he has a good outlap a one minute 30 outlap then he does a 120 and then he does a 119 and he sets this at that lap starts at 54 minutes but 
we can see from Alex, he's got, he's done three push laps. And on his third push lap, which started at 52 minutes into the session, that was about the peak of the track, right? Um, Max's lap comes almost two minutes after that. So it, Max definitely missed the peak of the track there, but that's not really the a, a big deal. You have to get a lap in. Uh, he did manage to get a good soft dry run lap and he made it into Q3 and that's all you need to do. So let's quickly look at what that looks like in terms of his intermediate versus his dry tire. And we can look at the telemetry here and we can see uh, blue is the intermediate tire and red is the soft tire. So on the intermediate, he didn't really have a whole lot of grip out of six, seven. And then by the time he was on that soft tire and set that lap, he had found about half a second there. A little bit more time he finds on the brakes into eight through nine and then finds a huge amount of time rolling speed and apex speed through turn 10. But this, remember, this is after, this was after the peak of that, unfortunately. So, and at the end of the lap, he has a little bit of lift, maybe some traffic there. So we're not really sure, but I mean, that's just to, to show you how much the track changed and it's really hard to figure out. Now, this is Albon's, this is Albon's smoky fast lap. And this is pretty impressive. So Albon, you know, two minutes earlier on the track, uh, he's faster through three, four, he's faster through eight, uh, Max, still pretty alex leaves a lot on the table here breaking into turn 10 which is still fine he still finishes a lap several tenths up uh, again max taking a lot of liberties on the brakes super confident more confident than alex is but alex is on the track at the right time with the right tire and uh he does he does all right for himself there honestly the next discussion is about leclerc and ferrari so is this a leclerc issue in qualifying or a Ferrari issue or both? And I think the answer is probably somewhere in between that. So if you remember, Leclerc leaves the garage on intermediates and he got, says, child guys, I think we should be on the soft. And he's probably not wrong at that point, but you've already made your bed. You know that the rain is expected to return and the engineers override him and say, stay out to set a lap, put a banker on the board. And I gotta say, I agree with that. I agree with that. And we'll get, we'll get into why I agree with that, but let's look at the difference between signs and Leclerc's run plans and what happened. So here's Sainz's laps and uh, here's Leclerc on the left, Sainz on the right. So they both got on the enters, they both put a banker on the board as a 20.6 and it's okay. It's just okay. I think we needed to be in the one, inside the 119s to get into Q2, or sorry, into Q3. Now you look at, here's the soft laps. They're both on the same run plan. They're basically starting their laps seven or eight seconds apart. So they're, they're in order on track. Seven seconds, eight seconds is great for a gap. Uh, so you don't have dirty air. Leclerc does a very fast outlap. Uh, he does a th about two and a half seconds faster than Sainz. Um, his first push lap is a 21.8. Sainz's first push lap is a second and a half faster. Then Leclerc does a 21.4. At this point, Sainz sets a 19.865. Now, 55 minutes into the session is just after the track is at its best, but it's still good enough for Sainz to set a 119.85. Uh, Look what happens. Great sector one, uh, great sector two, a couple tenths off of signs, only not much. And then we've got a disaster sector three. Uh, so what happens? Uh, Leclerc basically, so Leclerc is a little bit slower through turn six. Leclerc is a little bit slower through eight, nine, but ends up through that corner, not too far out. Uh, then it looks like he has some traffic or a tow, possibly from signs, because signs is only eight seconds ahead of him and there might be some other cars. I wasn't too sure. I went back and watched the video and look at this. I mean, basically, Sainz just outbreaks himself. He's carrying a lot more speed, probably unexpected from the toe. Uh, he outbreaks himself and he misses the chicane and he loses a load of time there, but it doesn't really matter because he, he went off the track. So if he had just kept it on the track, he would have been through to Q3. And I think genuinely, I think, yes, in general, the team don't listen to Sainz or they don't listen to the drivers very well. But at that point, I think the engineers made the right decision because of the nine other drivers other than Albon that did enter to soft, they did the exact same run plan. Albon was the exception and you don't need to be at the top of Q2, you just need to get through to Q3. So the fact that they didn't listen to him, yes, that sucks a little bit, but the engineers made the right decision to set a banker lap. They don't know if the track was going to get worse, fine, and they followed everybody else. The least that was gonna happen is the worst that happened to anybody else. Unfortunately, Leclerc did not put his lap together and there was realistically only for every driver, there was probably two laps that could have been the lap, and uh, he missed both of those opportunities. Interestingly, though, uh, Albon set his best lap 
quite early and he had three push laps or his third push lap was his fastest and he started his lap about 60 seconds before signs did which is about 66 68 seconds before leclerc did so that was the best window of the track unfortunately um the next one this one's not very much fun to look at let's look at perez versus verstappen on the uh on the inter he was about eight tenths off and on the soft he just never got the soft tire working but perez and verstappen were in the same uh run sequence so let's look at that real quick right so both verstappen and perez got on the inters uh here's the outlap on the softs perez's outlap was six seconds slower his first timed lap, which was his fastest lap, was a 1 minute 23, whereas Max was already doing a 120.3. And then Max goes a lap further when the track is at its best and he sets a 119. At this point, uh, Checo comes in and boxes. And that was probably, when it was 30 seconds later, that was probably about the best that the track was. And I don't, I don't, there's, I, there's not a whole lot to get into. There's a telemetry, but he's just losing time everywhere. I think realistically, Checo wasn't very confident in the car in the wet this weekend um, and sucks a bit. Perez wasn't confident on the brakes anywhere. He was losing, he was losing time through every corner sequence um, and potentially the slower outlap, whether it was his fault or he had traffic and he was managing gaps. Um, I don't think he got enough temperature to get the softs working. So that's that. Now let's look at Hulkenberg's uh, mega q2 lap or sorry his mega p2 lap in q2 which unfortunately he lost that lap time uh huge sad but so here's the lap time delta we've got verstappen and blue hulkenberg in red and realistically max is just finding lap time everywhere you notice this kink it's not really a corner in the dry but uh it's definitely a corner when the track is wet hulk has to dip out of the throttle quite a bit here loses a bit of time but like at the exit of turn four he's already down half a second loses a little bit through the kink at turn five but in the middle sector hulk is actually pretty strong and pretty reasonable giving a little bit of margin but getting a good exit out of nine uh giving up a little bit on the brakes into turn 10 good strong braking and rolling speed into the final chicane but uh he has a, sh a load of wheel spin you can see him you know on and off the throttle here and that that comes in two shapes and sizes one is he had wheel spin and he was trying to control it two the engine wasn't delivering torque particularly well and it was causing him to bounce and you can have it where the engine doesn't deliver torque and you get bouncing and you're literally the driver can't control their foot on the throttle so that's uh that is that is a possibility so that's not too exciting let's quickly look at alonzo's lap which set him uh p3 in qualifying this one's pr uh, pretty standard very similar situation through turn five by i turn six seven um max is up half a second now Hulk was better than Alonso through the second sector, and that's where he found most of his time. Uh, Alonso doesn't take too much risks in 8-9. He doesn't take too much risks in turn 10. And then in the final corner on the exit, Max is just gets so much a better drive out of there. Um, and that was that was what happened for Alonso. Now, the last one we've got is I've got Hamilton's lap to look at quickly because I think he was next on the road. Realistically, yeah, it makes sense. He's already down quite a bit by turn three. However, he does keep it lit through turn five, so he gets that lined up quite well and it adapts quickly. Um, loses a bit of time into six. His turn eight, nine chicane was good. Turn 10, he lost a bit there. And his final corner, Lewis's, was quite strong. So I think Merck not looking terrible in the wet. It was just a matter about getting it all together on the same lap time. So in terms of the final results for the qualifying session, this is what we've got uh, before penalties. Uh, Max. Nico, Fernando, Lewis, George, Esteban, Lando, Carlos, Piastri, and Alex Albon Leclerc, P11, just on the bumper. Uh, Sunoda doesn't make it through either. He got impeded quite severely, but but unfortunately, we've got some penalties. Here's the starting grid for today's Grand Prix. We've got Max and Fernando on the front row. Unfortunately, Hulkenberg gets dropped three, and I will explain what happened to Hulkenberg. When there is a red flag, remember there's a red flag for Piastri. Um, when there's a red flag, the safety car message is sent to or sorry the red flag message is sent to the computer of all the cars and that puts up a reference lap and the drivers have to say slower than that lap time they cannot go too fast unfortunately hulkenberg was confused with the lap time he wasn't going crazy fast he just happened to have finished a flying lap his delta uh needed to be positive so slower than the reference time but he was going too fast and he closed up a little bit i think it's like 1.5 seconds out and the fact that he got and he was confused by the messages as well. And his engineers, I went back and listened to the radio. Um, his engineers weren't doing a particularly good job of saying, listen, 
slow the car down. You're 1.5 seconds unsafe. You need to slow down. His engineer was telling him about other driver's lap times. So there's the controls engineer, the performance engineer, um, and the race engineer that should be monitoring that and being like, listen, so Nico should have known better, A, and the engineers, if he didn't know, should have caught him out and told him, listen, throw the anchor out, mate. So unfortunately, interestingly, um, so 55, 22, and 18, who do we got there? Um, Signs Tsunoda, Stroll given three pace penalties for impeding. It's super hard. It's super easy to get an impeding penalty here, but that's on the race engineers and drivers to get it done. Hulkenberg is given a three place penalty for not going slower. The fact that, you know, Signs has blocked several people and gets three seconds, and then Hulkenberg is slightly too fast on his red flag delta lap time. That's a bit wild to me, but uh, it's penalties a penalty. So if you enjoyed this, uh, analysis all of this is available on my buy me a coffee so if you do exclamation data in the twitch stream uh there's the link there i do this for every qualifying and every race and then um this will be live on youtube later and if you're watching this on youtube don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe um and i will see you guys soon and if you're hanging out on the stream don't worry we're about to go into the race watch along i'm going to call grand pooh bear in just a second but hope you enjoyed that check out the link and i'll see you in a minute